Hi, I'm Kelsey Brennan Wessels, and welcome to this special edition of Earth from Space on the European Space Agency Web TV. Until now, we have been discussing satellites' view of Earth from about 800 kilometers high. We've looked at some familiar areas, got a new perspective of places we know, and explored new regions through the eyes of satellites. But what about through the eyes of humans, like those of astronauts? The International Space Station flies at about 400 kilometers above Earth. The astronauts on the space station, or ISS, get their own unique perspective of our planet. To find out more, I have with me in the studio today astronaut Paolo Nespoli, who has literally been to space and back. Welcome to the show. Thank you, thank you. Now, Paolo, you've been to space not once, but twice. Why is that? Why I was in space twice? Yeah. <laughs> I guess the first time was not enough. No, I was, uh, I was in space twice, first, the first time on the space shuttle in a short duration mission to build up the space station, mm -hmm. and then second time on a long duration mission, really to stay in space for almost six months and work up there. Wow. Now the first time you went up to space and you looked out the window and you looked down and saw our Earth from 400 kilometers high, what was that like? <laughs> Actually, it's, uh, it's almost anticlimactic in a certain way because uh, you see this very gorgeous blue planet, but, uh, but uh, the first times that you look out, you see uh, uh, oceans and clouds. And, and then you look, you know, 15 minutes later, you see ocean and clouds. And then you look an hour later, it's ocean and clouds. And, and before you start uh, perceiving things, before you start having a, a view of understanding where you are and start picking up stuff. It takes quite uh, quite a while. I would say that uh, I'm really grateful of uh, having been in space for six months because uh, after you know four or five, six weeks, seven, w a month or two months, you actually start n understanding uh, things that uh, otherwise you would not uh, not understand. So your eyes have to get used to seeing it from that perspective. For example, mm -hmm. uh, you get somehow, and I cannot explain this, somehow you get a geographical uh, representation of the Earth and you're spinning around it and you know where you are. So mm. it happens many times. For example, we have a cupola, beautiful, beautiful cupola, and we have exercise an exercise machine under it. So mm. you, you end up doing the exercise with the Earth uh, passing uh, wow. On wow. your window, and and you're sitting there looking outside, and it's like, wow, that's Australia, mm -hmm. and then you know a few minutes later, wow, that's uh, South America wow. or uh, that's Africa, mm -hmm. and at the beginning you don't have this kind of uh, understanding, mm -hmm. but then somehow you develop this, and it's very nice. So you're not actually looking down; you're looking all around you. I'm saying that. Well, the cupola, it's a, it's a very interesting um, um, part of the station because. Uh, uh, before the cupola, we only had small uh, uh, windows, mm -hmm. and, and, and through those windows, you can only see a very limited amount of, uh, of Earth, and it's very difficult to figure out where you are, mm -hmm. and you almost get always a perpendicular view. Mm -hmm. Now have, you have the cupola, which has a large central window mm -hmm. perpendicular to Earth, but six other windows around. Mm -hmm. So you can actually look around and see the whole, mm -hmm. the whole planet mm -hmm. uh, passing by. You can see something is coming, so you prepare your camera, you follow it through, you can take pictures that are slanted from one side, mm -hmm. perpendicular and slanted from the other mm -hmm. side. So mm -hmm. it changes uh, for the purpose of uh, uh, doing Earth observation and also having a little bit of fun. Uh, the cupola is very nice. Mm -hmm. Now you mentioned with the camera, so you're also a photographer in addition to being an astronaut. Well, well I think everybody when he goes in space becomes a photographer because it's almost impossible looking at these things and not grabbing the cameras, which there are plenty down there. Grab the cameras and take some pictures. Some people take more, some people take less. I took uh, something like 26,000 pictures in in uh, five and a half months. You think uh, they are a lot, but there are some people that took like 25,000 a week. Wow. So, so I think I was a, a medium, uh, medium user of the cupola. Okay, were you interested in photography before you went up there, or is it something that sort of came naturally? Well, no, F photography has been one of the things that I always uh, liked. Uh, when I was a kid, I used to, um, I, I worked with some friends in a um, dark room. Uh, I always had a camera. I was in the army. I had the camera. As soon as I started jumping off planes, I had the camera on top <laughs> of my helmet. Uh, uh, I had the camera almost everywhere. So it's, uh, when I got up there, it was only natural to take the camera and continue this documentation of what I was seeing. Okay, well we're going to look at a couple of the images that you took while you were up on the yes. International Space Station. The first one we have up here on the screen is uh, of Eritrea, if I'm not mistaken. 
Yes, yes. I think this is uh, these are the deserts uh, down there. It's uh, it's very beautiful from up there because you get this uh, very blue contrasts uh, from space. You have the the desert on the one side, and then you have the shallow waters, which are a bit lighter color. And then as the the waters get deeper, it gets a bit more dark blue. Yes, mm -hmm. yes, mm -hmm. yes, yes. Of course, those uh, these um, pictures here are taken with the uh, photo lenses. I think it's like uh, 400 millimeters or 800 millimeters. We have this very large uh, lenses that we can use up there. Mm -hmm. So it's, this is not what you, you see actually with your eyes. But with the, with the photo lens, you can actually pick up the detail. Uh, you know, you see these little islands, uh, these little things, so this blue. It, it, it's one of the things that is very nice, and you can see it especially in the Caribbeans, mm -hmm. uh, is the, the, the water that takes the sand and builds these huge curtains. Mm -hmm. I mean, it looks like from space, it looks like uh, I'm, I'm talking about like 100 kilometers long of, of sand that is uh, um, like combed through, through these things in a very nice way. That's, mm -hmm. It's very fascinating to look at those things from, from the space. There's only one little detail which we forgot to say. Station is traveling at 28,000 kilometers per hour, oh which wow. is about 7.7 .7 kilometers per second. Mm -hmm. So if you're at the window and you see something that you like, you better have the camera right. ready there mm -hmm. because you have like three or four seconds, maybe five, to take a picture and then right. it's gone. But then when would be the next time you pass over the same spot? Well, that's an interesting point because um, uh, the, the Earth uh, uh, rotates about 15 uh, degrees every, every, every pass. Mm -hmm. So you, 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 ha you rotate in the same way, but Earth is spinning around. Mm -hmm. So eventually you pass over the same place uh, several times during, uh, actually I would say dozens of times during a six months mission. Mm -hmm. But remember, time changes, weather changes, cloud cover changes, the sun or the position of the sun changes, the, the season changes. Mm -hmm. So it's, I felt uh, taking picture from space was like taking picture of a model that constantly changes. So mm -hmm. you're taking picture and, and he or she is kind of changing clothes, changing hair, mm -hmm. changing things. So it's, it's amazing because uh, in, a, in, a, in an hour time frame or, or in few, few, few times you take picture, you can take completely different pictures. Mm -hmm. It's very interesting. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Now let's take a look at the next image here. This is of, uh, I think, an eastern part of Madrid. So you're talking about the zoom and how you can get really down. Yes. And you can see the little details, the roads, the buildings. Yeah, this is a, a a, a um, uh, perpendicular view of uh, of Madrid. Uh, uh, actually, it's a, it's even a detail of Madrid. It's not the whole, the whole Madrid. Very very interesting. You can actually see down to the building from up there. O of course, as I said, with uh, you need to have a zoom. Um, very interesting. You see, uh, you can contrast the the places that are uh, inhabited with a lot of houses and the places that are actually uh, a little bit more. I would not say wild because this is Spain, but, but rural, let's put it like this. So mm -hmm. Very nice. Mm -hmm. Let's go on to the next image we have here. This looks like an abstract painting. What are, what are we looking at This here? is one of my preferred, actually. Uh, I always, uh, I show this picture to, uh, usually during uh, my presentation and ask people, so what do you think it is? And, and very few people can make it out. I mean, it's, it's clearly a river up there, uh, splitting in two, kind of a fork there. But then there is this kind of cascade below. And, and one of the things that I always say, you need to remember looking at this picture that the scale is pretty large. So we are talking about 80 or 100 kilometers uh, wide. Uh, so it's not something little. It's not something that you would be able to see from an aircraft. Uh, my interpretation of this picture is that we are in northern Canada, uh, winter, so very cold, uh, and uh, this, uh, this river has all sorts of little uh, uh, affluents or, 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 or other little rivers that depart from it, and, and, and I think the temperature of this uh, little one is slightly higher than the ambient temperature, so they kind of dissolve, and it makes like this kind of aquarelle uh, uh, effect, uh, which I like very much. Mm -hmm. Now, earlier you were talking about how, of course, you're passing over these areas. Uh, it, it's dark, atmospheric conditions these sort of things determine if you can or cannot take a photo. Now, of course, with satellites, we have radars, and yes. radars is something that, for example, in, in places like Canada, 
uh, where you know it's dark for you know a lot of the year. It's uh, the atmospheric conditions aren't really favorable. We can see through the clouds and we can see and monitor ice cover, for example. I would say that satellites are much more precise. Mm -hmm. uh, satellites have a, a purpose being up there. They have many more sensors, mm -hmm. uh, and uh, and so. I think from space, from the space station, the pictures that we we, we take uh, are more of uh, of uh, uh, informational, think of educational purposes. Uh, we, we can we can f uh, do a little bit of analysis, right. but uh, mm -hmm. but they're more for, uh, for uh, if we want really a scientific picture, then we need to have the sensors uh, and the precision mm -hmm. and the repeti repetition or the capability of, of re repeating things mm -hmm. that the satellite have. Right. So so that. There are two, two things, two different things. Of course, of course. Now this next image is uh, actually one of my favorites. This uh -huh. is of the Emi Kusi uh, caldera, which is in Chad. Now before I ask you to comment on this, I'm going to ask to change the image to the next one we have, which is also the same area, farther back, a wider, wider angle, if you will. This is from the MVSAT satellite. Um, this is, uh, you know, of course, flying about double the height that you're flying at. Now, with this, we're at a 300 meter resolution. So the Emikusi caldera is sort of the lower right portion of this dark area. So we don't get the precision that you can with that camera that you have. Let's go back and, and take a look at the one. Yeah, so here you can actually see the sm smaller, finer details. Yeah, I think uh, that f from the station, if you are lucky and uh, the conditions are good, and by the way, we are in the middle of the Sahara Desert mm -hmm. here, so by definition, the conditions are always good. Right. There are no clouds, uh, full sun. Uh, yeah, the, the shadow can be different depending on the side, but uh, it's easy. Uh, taking picture of this area, it's uh, relatively easy. Uh, I think we can go down to 30 meters resolution from the space station, which right. is pretty good. That's uh, very of good. course, there are satellites that go much, much better than this. Um, it's a nice, uh, it's a nice picture. After all, this is uh, this is something that people don't think that in the middle of the desert there are there is a mountain range. Uh, in space, is really really visible. Uh, you can see a couple of things on that area. You can see there's a uh, caldera, which is uh, which is essentially an, a volcano. I don't even know if it is extinct or not. Probably it is. Um, but you can also see not far away from there, there is an impact of a uh, meteorite. So mm. it's uh, it's very interesting. It's very interesting flying over the desert. It's always a discovery because mm -hmm. you see the, the the flatlands with the with the sand. Uh, actually, from space you have a sense of the direction of the wind, of the power of the wind. Uh, the wind is very strong. The, the lines of the sand are all straight, mm -hmm. combed again. If uh, the wind is kind of uh, twirly, then you get this uh, spinning stuff like around. Brush strokes, almost exactly, like a painting. exactly, mm -hmm. exactly. Very nice, very nice. Beautiful, beautiful. Now this next image I'm going to pull up here is actually I was uh, talking about radars, how we can see through clouds and we can uh, look at different things using radars. This is a composite where we take three radar images, uh, we assign them each a different color and combine them so we can see changes between the acquisitions. So this, of course, is uh, Cyprus, what we call Aphrodite's Island. You called it the the same in uh, in, yes. your, in your Flickr. Uh, a photo album I saw. Let's go to the next picture. Here's um, one of your images of Cyprus. This is looking straight down. And then going ahead, we have another image. This is looking at an angle so you get to see the atmosphere. Yes, mm -hmm. yes, this is one of the capabilities that we have that I think satellites uh, normally don't have because they are mostly perpendicular. So we can actually look on the side and we can have this kind of uh, long range view. Uh, actually, we were asked once in a while to, to take pictures of cities or special places because if you take a slanted view like this, you can actually see the particulate uh, in the atmosphere, so measure the pollution. Mm -hmm. uh, um, in this case here, we can uh, actually see the uh, island of Cyprus and then uh, far down the road there, we can see the atmosphere, which is really, really nice. Uh, so it's, it gives you a little bit of a view of what uh, you actually would see from the space station with the naked eye. This mm -hmm. is, uh, I would say, that this is what you see up there. Mm -hmm. No, this is beautiful. Now, now, satellites' optical images, of course, look down, but there are some satellites that can measure things like methane, ozone, carbon dioxide content. So we also use that for the yes. you know, urban monitoring, uh, looking at air quality over a lot of areas. But of course, we don't get this nice view of the, the edge of the atmosphere and then the, the space, the infinite space beyond. It's a beautiful, beautiful picture. Now, Paolo, this is not the last time we're going to see you on uh, ESA's Web TV channel. What do you have uh, in store for us? Well, um, um, 
now I don't even know what kind of uh, title to give to this show, but, but talking a little bit, picking out some of these pictures that I took uh, in space and, uh, and talk a little bit about this. I think uh, uh, it, uh, it was interesting for me taking the picture, uh, but I think it's also interesting uh, looking at them. We can see a lot of stuff. We can see uh, a little bit how we use resources here on Earth. Uh, we can see the, the, um, the, the, the beautiful side of the planet. Uh, we can see, I think you can perceive through this picture the, the, um, the, the fact that this ecological uh, planet is in balance, uh, and I think this is important for all of us. Now, will you only look at your photographs, or will you also talk about your experience as an astronaut, going up into space, the training, all these things? I'm sure everyone has a lot of questions about this. We, we will see. I mean, uh, I think uh, maybe what we can do is it's, uh, it's ask uh, uh, the, uh, the, the people that are looking at this and ask them to, to tell us what uh, they, want, uh, they want us to to talk about it. Oh, yeah, uh, they want to know, absolutely. I'm here. I'm here. We'll you're start here? with the pictures and then we'll see where we go. Right, you're here to answer our questions. That <laughs> we, that's what we like to hear. Well, Paolo, thank you so much for joining us on the show today. And to our viewers, be sure to look back at the ESA Web TV channel to hear more about Paolo Nespoli's experiences as an astronaut and looking down at Earth from space. From the ESA Web TV studios, I'm Kelsey Brennan-Wessels. <laughs>